Well, hello there, YouTube, and welcome to Saturday, June 27th of 2020. Been like this all day. The highest is made at 61 degrees, but it's showing a 0% chance of rain for uh, until like 9 p.m. or something. But uh, on Thursday, June 27th, 2013, seven years ago, like approximately right now at about 5:45, I purchased a 19 or a 2013 Iron 883 from latest Harley Davidson in Gladstone, Oregon. So today is her birthday, almost right on the spot. So uh, let's take the birthday girl for a ride. A woman standing out there. It's pretty, it's pretty cool out here actually. I'm wearing my Icon with the liner in it. My climb, which these aren't really warm, so I may switch to the 100% at some point. Because after, you know, it's been 80s near 90 here for the last week or whatever it's been, or at least this week. Um, 61 degrees feels pretty cold. 61 degrees would be luck. We'd be happy to have that at night. We're trying to rest, and I'm doing vlogs and stuff. So let's take her for a rip. Look at this, 5.45 exactly. See you here in a bit. Let's take the birthday girl for a ride. Oh, you know what? We haven't taken her down here in a long time. I didn't know this was here. Jeez, what was it, last year or year before? I mean, I drove by here and I thought this was the park. I literally thought this was it. And then one day, I'd, I don't know what I was riding. I'd just come down here and went, wow, look at all this stuff down here. Score. Yeah, a lot of things have changed. Ooh, there's a bunch of people down there. I don't want to go interrupting their little private time. They probably come out here for pre peace and serenity and all of a sudden there's blah 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 but you know one of the things unless you got open pipes and it's obnoxiously loud even non-motorcycle people like the sound of a Harley but when they're super loud that's a game changer they don't like that at all nobody likes that It's funny the people that, that think people do. <laughs> and the people that really like it. Take a deep breath and a deep look and ask yourself, is that really the person you want to attract? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Oh, we got a whole clan down here. Look, they don't even, they ain't even paying attention to me being down here. They just let her idle along, and she's just making a soothing, heartwarming rumble. <laughs> she has that sound of a warm campfire on a cool evening. Head. It's pretty bad when you laugh at yourself. It's like going, you are a knucklehead. Well, what the heck's wrong? <laughs> what the heck's wrong with you? Uh, you almost need a little bit of rain. Everything's turning to that kind of a silty, dusty thing. Makes my back fenders all dusty. Because they're all short and bobbed off and it, fl it flings it around. Like puffs it in the air and then the circle of air behind you pulls it in and just makes your back fender all dusty. I still love the heck out of this thing. You know, you don't have that intensity that you did when it was, uh, when it was brand new. But that always happens with everything. But I still look at it and go... I love you. <laughs> but 
there ain't nothing coming either direction, is there? Them two horses are always side. Oh, look, now you can get a good look at them. It's the two horses that uh, I tend to freak out. No choo choo magoos today. That's not why I come down. I just come down here, take the old iron for a ride. It's close. I used to ride it out here all the time. And it's just fun. It's just one of those places that is always fun to ride. The seasons change, you know, the a tree falls down, somebody logs something, a new house gets built. The grass is taller this year than last year. <laughs> something, you know. It's always changing. This is one of those areas that is always changing. Seasonal wise. Get an evening ride and that, and that beautiful golden light and them old rustic barns. That just does something good for you. Something wholesome. Rico, she's uh she's moving kind of slow, isn't she? Ah, there's some people trespassing. You're busted, buddy. I'm gonna go tell this old dude. things I don't know how how you perceive this thing I talk about it being loud it's actually not, it's not loud it's a uh, it's rush slip-ons with their smallest baffles they're 1.75 inch and uh, they need to be repacked um, you can buy the they have a cord that's pre-wrapped, but I can I can wrap them. But yeah, I'm sure they're long since overdue for a for a repack. Oh, I'm not paying attention. It's after six o'clock. I just drove down here for nothing. Well, that's not the reason I'm down the dirt road. Look how tall that's got. It's just gonna close in. And you're gonna come around the corner, and you're not even gonna be able to come on down the road. It's gonna go nope. Turn around, son. <laughs> the old birthday girl. Still absolutely adore it. I love the... Uh, you guys that have bought these things. And, uh, and you don't have to answer me. Uh... 
I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Sinbar? Sinbar 2? Are you the, I think, Australian? Are you the guy I met outside the cedar mill? I think that's you. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But anyway, he has a Honda Goldwing. And uh, not too long ago, bought an Iron 883. And he talks about how addicting it is. Not fast. They don't do anything special, but make you smile. I mean, deep down in your soul, make you smile. It's like fun at a really high level. You don't go fast on them. I mean, you can go fast, but you gotta kind of work at it to go really fast on them. Can you go riding with your buddies with sport bikes and stuff? Yeah, as long as they're not racing around. Is your buddies with cruisers and stuff like that gonna leave you? Nah. In a drag race? Yeah. But people don't drive like that all the time. But you're not gonna find some mountainy, twisty road that guys are out dragging their knees on their uh, 600 liter bikes. They're, they're just gonna, you're gonna see a tail light very quickly disappear in front of you. But it won't matter, because you're gonna be riding with a smile. But what I can say about them, they're very comfortable. And with a good seat like this, a little Mustang seat, if I had the tour on this thing, other than, you know, not having the big room to pack extra stuff, and the fact that you don't have a whole lot of room to move around, that's what gets you, is that stuck in one spot. But, uh, you know, I got the passenger pegs on it, and I just swap back and forth. I either want my legs under me or behind me. I am not, I do not like them in front of me. I, I just don't. I'll go up there for a little bit, you know, just to stretch a leg or something. But, uh, you know, I can do that going down the road. Just don't get too relaxed and let your foot hit the ground, or you might see your foot doing this uh, a twirly thing going past you the wrong direction. That wouldn't be good. I thought for sure she was going to pull out. Holy moly. You guys are about to see a full breaking event from the iron. It's good to ride stuff like this in the DR with no ABS. And you know it. You don't, you don't even, you don't even just a thought that didn't even come to your head like oh wait I don't have ABS you just know we don't have it and you uh look at that oh I was about to say we tricked that self-canceling turn soon although it's usually way more immediate than that if you take a super gradual turn you can trick them but they time out pretty quick but yeah it, stopping without ABS takes really good control because just a moment just a brief moment of too much front brake and that's really 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 hard to overcome to come out of that to pitch a front wheel so what I did when I was road racing there's no ABS ABS on motorcycles didn't even exist initially yeah, it wasn't until, what, 88 when BMW started putting them on their bikes. Standard, you know. But uh, what I used to do is go, go bombing around and skidding the front wheel around. I'd skid around everywhere. I'd do it, like, non-stop on my dirt bikes and dual sports. Just ride that front brake, that front wheel locked as far as you can. But to do it on a street bike, you had to, uh, you had to find some gritty road find these places where there's gravel and you, you still you can't do it very far on a street bike because weight and stuff like that but it learns learned you a very valuable lesson and, and that's not the panic you when uh when you lock the front wheel up it is old or steady the only problem is when you're in a turn there's no saving you that's that's almost impossible to come out of but you can just don't panic. I think what uh, what happens to a lot of people is that front end locks up and it 
pitches and then your natural reaction is just to squeeze it harder it'll get you it happens so fast instantly she's a good old guy track and somebody's losing oil and you don't notice it or smell it down you go and I mean instant you know I think all but a couple crashes I had on the road race track was uh was losing the front end and oil I never outbroke myself and washed myself out I hit oil. And each one of those things were brutal. That's the hardest you'll ever go down. Because it's just, it's like the bike throws you down. You know, it's funny, you're already banked in the turn, so you think, well, you know, I already got a knee on the ground. How far can I go? Well, I think the worst thing is it happens so fast, you usually, you just can't react fast enough. You know, bounce your head off. And then, you know, I don't know, if you, you, just, you need to get on your, lay flat on your stomach or on your back as soon as possible because you start flipping and that's what tears you up is when you start to rolling. Not good. My first real good get off was on my CBX up in Seattle. I see a guy coming around, what would that be? 10, 10, 11, I don't know what turn it was, I see him smoking, and I'm going, oh, I better look up, I never finished the oil part, and next thing I know, I wake up, and my roommate, you remember the place in Kelso, he's standing over me, and he goes, are you alive? Dave's still a licensed mortician. That was Dave York, the guy that owned the store I was working for. And then I realized Kelly comes running up. He was, uh, I don't know how he got there so fast. But then next thing I know, I see medics and stuff there. Then I come to once and uh, flying down the highway. And I'm all strapped up in this ambulance. Ambulance. And then the next thing I remember is being in a wheelchair and seeing my mom and my dad. And for some reason, I think my sister was there. I see them walking down the hallway. I had plenty of get offs on the road. I showed you that one. I went over it. That was on the other channel where I lost my CB750F. But she went. She hit a tree right between the seat and the tank and just whoop, wrapped the bike around a great big old fir tree. That's when I had a really bad temper and I was mad because I let the service manager talk me into putting one step bigger size tires on there. Never, ever again in my life have I ever put the wrong size tires on a motorcycle. I can change the handling in a way that is extremely unfavorable and instantly literally instantly that's what it did to that 750F and I let him talk me into it I was a little intimidated by him and he says you need to do that you need to do that look at them skinny tires you need to go one step bigger and instantly the thing handled like a you know 1980 Cadillac sedan DeVille, you know. It was terrible. Don't ever let somebody talk you into something that you don't want to do. Didn't want to do it, and he intimidated me. I let him do it. And uh, it only got one, well, I got a ride.
ride home. I think I'm still was I living at my mom's house? Uh, yeah, I'm still living at home. Yeah, because my mom came and got me. But uh Yeah, I rode it home and then the next day um I got up early. I was gonna go over Columbia Heights. A little road race course. But you should never have any road, any public road that you call a road race course. If you do, your days are numbered. There's always a racetrack somewhere. Join a club. Go club race and go to the track days they have now. They didn't have that when I was a kid. Go to the track days. Burn all that aggression out out there in a controlled environment. You're not gonna, you know, slide off and go head into this dodge or a tree or through somebody's barbed wire fence. Not good. Yeah, the lessons you learn. And I'll get the I'll get people at work going. So it calls for this. Can we go to that? Absolutely positively not. Don't put it on. You're gonna get us all sued. Under no circumstances. If it's some kind of custom build, you're going to be flopping around on some old raked out Harley or something. That's one thing. If it's a road legal standard motorcycle that some kid may go racing around on, yeah, you could, yeah, you could you not only lose your livelihood, but your freedom. You can literally get thrown in prison for involuntary manslaughter. Don't mess with that stuff. There ain't iron. You're good, empty today. We'll get you a good, full, freshy, fresh tank of gas. How do you like that? Oh, 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 birthday fuel. She goes, all I want for my birthday is a full tank of ethanol free premium. Well, I'm going to get you just that. You just hang tight here, young lady. You guys talk to your motorcycles? Surely you do. If you don't, you ain't been doing this long enough. They become your little friends. Look at all the care you take of it. You might as well talk to it. Out there, oh, I got your little spot on there. We'll clean that off. <laughs> all right, I'll be back. Well, the old iron. She's got herself a fresh tank of uh, ethanol-free premium on her birthday. 52.28 miles at a gallon. That ain't bad. Come on, you loafing old rattly thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say that in front of you? You know, there's some people out there that don't like you. Amazing how fast seven years goes. It's weird you think yeah. of it one way, it seems like it's been much, much, much longer than that. Then another seems like it was yesterday. Yeah. It's 
It's weird. What it goes by seven years. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, the the long part, thinking about where I was at, at Pro Caliber at the time, and how how all that has changed so drastically, like really drastically. Nuts. Yeah, it's crazy. Boy, glad's the way it is now. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nuts. Well, anyway, thank you guys very much for coming along for the little rip. Apologize for the weather. No, not much I can do about it. Just no. Nope. But it didn't to... rain. It's just yeah, it didn't rain. Looking. I'm looking off on that. Look how bright that's looking back there. Yeah, because it's gonna clear off and be bitter cold. Yeah, probably. That'd be nice as long as it's clear tomorrow. I do got to get the lawn mowed. Yeah. I, I kept thinking it was going to rain today, so I thought, well, <laughs> it took me forever to get that video done yesterday, the spider right at the gristmill. Just the day got away from me. But I wanted to take off at about 5.45 today, and I that worked that like to a T. Yeah, you did. I can't believe I zeroed that, turned the key on, said 5.45, and go, yep, this is it. She's officially <laughs> seven years old. Yeah. All right, we're going to bounce. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. We will talk to you tomorrow. Same smoke time, same smoke channel. Don't forget to give her a thumbs up. And you guys have a wonderful Sunday or Monday. Heck yeah. We'll see you all tomorrow. See you in the morning. All right. See you then. Bye-bye <laughs> now. Happy birthday, Errol Wyron. <laughs>